Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. If you're not following me on Twitter, my handle is at Paul H. Beckwith. And uh, basically, there's been a lot going on on the climate front in the last, um, well, this summer, in the last few weeks especially, uh, with these wildfires, um, torrential rains, for example, uh, downtown Toronto, got heavy rainfall, leading to lots of flooding, lots of wildfires in, uh, you know, places like Greece and California and Northern Ontario and Siberia, and those are ongoing. Um, lots of stuff like that. But what I really want to talk about is what I think is one of the most significant papers um, on the overall Earth system and how, how, we're, how we're changing. So basically, this is, uh, there, you probably have seen, there's been numerous articles, climate change, hothouse earth risks, even if CO2 emissions are slashed. So this is looking at the idea that if we slash CO2 emissions um, as fast as possible, the changes to the earth system, the, 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 the geosphere, the biosphere, could already have passed or be approaching rapidly or um, maybe, you know, some people even think past, and that will lead to uh, the sources, the, the sinks of carbon on the earth, the boreal forests, the oceans, the grasslands, things that take CO2 out of the atmosphere naturally. If those, sort, if those sinks are all stressed too much and stop taking in CO2, then the levels can start rising, and this is, we can rough, rapidly shoot up to a hothouse state. So, so uh, basically, let's look at this study. Okay, it's called Trajectories of the Earth System in the Anthropocene. Okay, so a bunch of authors from Europe. Timothy Lenton wrote a paper, I believe it was in 2008, called Tipping Elements of the Climate System, where he looked at all of the different elements of the Earth system that could tip and uh, lead to cascading feedbacks to cause very accelerated warming. Uh, I met this guy, Sheldon Huber, in Europe at the Paris COP. Um, he's one of the most eminent um, climate scientists from Europe. So the idea is that these self-reinforcing feedbacks could push the Earth system to a, a threshold. And if we cross this threshold, then the climate wouldn't stabilize at intermediate temperature rises. It would continue warming rapidly to a hothouse earth pathway, even as human emissions are reduced. So we don't have the luxury of time. We have to treat this as a climate emergency and act accordingly. If we cross this threshold, we would get a much higher global average temperature than any interglacial in the past 1.2 million years, sea levels significantly higher than at any time in the Holocene. Okay, so the, it, it talks about things that we can do. Uh, we need stewardship of the entire Earth system. Um, and that can include a lot of different things. Decarbonization of the global economy is only one of those. We need to enhance the biosphere carbon sinks. We need of obviously lots of changes in human society, behavioral changes, technological innovations, better ways of governing things, and changing our values on what's important. Basically, we need to restore the health of, of our climate system. So I'm going to talk about this paper, just some of the key details here. So let's have a look, uh, just enlarged, control plus. Uh, let's scroll down. Okay, so basically, if this is temperature up here. So this is uh, pre-industrial, about 1750 or so temperature. So the Earth, for the last 1.2 million years, we have records going back 800,000 years in Antarctic ice cores. Um, some of the new cores might go back a million years, so about 1.2 million years. We've oscillated between these glacial interglacial cycles with about a hundred thousand year time period. Um, okay, so this is in, this is in the um, 
Okay, so this is what's been going on, cycling from cold. When it's cold, more of the water in the oceans is stored in ice, glacial ice. And then when it warms up, temperature rises, the ice melts, sea level rises, and we get this cycle here. So we're, here's where we are right now. Okay, we're about a degree above pre-industrial. Okay, and what there's a couple of different paths here. If we do treat this climate, abrupt climate change as a climate emergency and try to reverse it, perhaps we can stabilize the earth into this pattern. This is what we have to try to do. Maybe we're already up further on the curve. That's not really the question to ask. We have no choice but to try to stabilize the earth system. Um, this is a two degree Celsius above pre, higher than pre-industrial temperature agreed on in the Paris um, climate conference uh, with aspiration of one and a half degrees. The actual, this is the actual characteristics of the system, although the scale can be obviously different. This is, this is what these authors thought was the, the best um, depiction of what, what the reality is. So if we go business as usual, we'll be shooting up here into this hothouse earth and we'll be there for millennia. And, uh, you know, if we come up on this path, then, you know, we're, we're prob we've probably left things too late unless we can have, you know, radical solar radiation management, um, you know, not radical, but extreme solar radiation management and, and also carbon capture. Okay, so, Let's go down to the next diagram here. And, okay, so basically we have this uh, energy plot or potential energy landscape, if you like, and there's these valleys and these peaks. So the valleys are low, higher stability. Imagine a ball rolling, and if a ball gets stuck down in the bottom here, it's very hard to get it out. The ball's at the top of the hill, it can easily roll down to either side. We've had, uh, the blue is cold, the red is hotter, so we've had these cold periods, these uh, glacial periods, we've had these interglacial periods, these warmer periods, okay, and so the earth has been in this sort of so small valley here for the warm periods. Now, what's happened is, is as time comes out this way, we've been moving away from this zone of stability. We've been moving away from these glacial interglacial cycles and we're sitting right here. So human emissions have carried us there. Now, if we can declare a global climate emergency and all hands on deck to try to have demonstrate earth system stewardship, we can try to bring ourselves back to a stable position. But the present way the present pathway that we're heading right now is along this path here and it's going to become harder and harder to go back to this zone of stability here if this is a threshold some think we've already crossed the threshold um you, and and i you know we may have crossed the threshold the way you define it is a bit kind of it's a bit murky because sure i'd say we have probably crossed some sort of threshold but applying solar radiation management and carbon dioxide removal, okay, applying these new techniques um, can hopefully bring us back in, into stability. But if we don't, then the feedbacks build up and we get to this hothouse earth situation. Okay, so these are some of the uh, feedbacks that accelerate the warming, permafrost thawing, weakening of the land and ocean sinks, carbon sinks. So the oceans are warmer, they can't absorb as much carbon. The oceans are more stratified, there's less phytoplankton, there's less carbon sink. Um, the land, okay, the, the boreal forests start burning. That carbon goes up into the atmosphere, less carbon, the, those trees aren't left to absorb carbon or grasslands. Um, and there's some other things, Amazon forest dieback, boreal forest dieback, increased bacterial respiration in the ocean. There's a whole bunch of different, feed there's a number of different feedbacks that they mention here. There's a lot more than this. I'm not sure why 
This is, uh, this is just some of the carbon cycle one. Now, this is, uh, this is sort of the key graph and the key, um, let me expand it even more. Control plus. Okay, so this is a key um, map here. And this is very similar to that, the one that Lenton ha had in his 2008 paper, Tipping Elements in the Climate System. So the tipping elements at risk, this is a temperature required, the global average temperature rise in order to set off these tipping elements. This is, a, this is the best sort of view, the, the um, consensus view of all the scientists who wrote this paper. So one to three degrees, we're already at one degree. Okay, three to five are the orange ones and the red ones are five degrees or more. Okay, so what we have here is we've got, so the ones that we're already seeing right now, Greenland ice sheet, rapidly losing mass. The, the rate of ice melt is doubling every seven years or so. Same as the West Antarctic ice sheet. The Arctic summer sea ice, of course, is rapidly heading out. Now in this paper, they still think it, it, it first vanishes in the summer for this blue ocean event in the summer you know, in 2040 or 2050. Uh, most of us that are looking at the um, plots, et cetera, you know, think that's a too conservative number. I mean, we're, we're looking, you know, we're likely to lose all of this summer sea ice, you know, probably within, within five years. Alpine glaciers rapidly losing um, ice, coral reefs, you know, over half the reefs in Australia have been, have been uh, killed already. Um, so those things are all there. Now, I'm not sure why they have jet stream at three to five. Okay, the, we, the jet stream changes have, have been significant already, greatly ramping up the incidence of extreme weather event. Boreal forests, okay, we're seeing all of these fires in the boreal forest already. Um, the, El, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, changing nature, happening more frequently. Amazon rainforest dieback, thermohaline circulation, ocean circulation slowing down. The Sahel drying out as the intertropical convergence zone shifts location. The Hadley cells are expanding. Okay, those are the, the like the gears, if you like. Um, there's the Hadley, the feral, and the polar cell, and the Hadley is expanding as the earth is warming. The Indian monsoon changing character. And then greater than five, they have permafrost, um, Arctic winter sea ice, and East Antarctic ice sheet. I've done, done lots of videos on all of these different components. You can just go on my website, paulbeckwith.net, go on the right-hand word search, and just click on the, the, the particular topic you want, and you'll find videos that I've done in the last few years on, on that topic. Okay, so let me shrink back down. Okay, so, you know, basically the human feedbacks are, are the biggest factor. Um, you know, our politics, our understanding of the problem, taking strong action, and it's going downhill right now. We're, we're, we're simply not rising to meet the challenge. Lots of individual cities are, but federal governments aren't, and the fossil fuel uh, industry is too strong, etc. Okay, so just um, Google this paper, and uh, just, just Google this paper, okay? Trajectories of the Earth System in the Anthropocene, and, uh, you know, read through it. If you, you know, use the comment section in this video to ask questions, and either myself or others will answer. And uh, this is the uh, paper um, Lenton here, Timothy Lenton, 2008, Tipping Elements in the Earth Climate System. You could also Google that paper and have a look at it, and you can compare this paper to that one, and you'll find lots of similarities. Now, there's an appendix for this paper. So if you just click on the appendix, I'm going to discuss that in, in, a, in a second video. So thank you for listening.